Okay, good afternoon, Year 13 psychologists. Um, welcome to the next video. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to be looking at the third and final um, explanation of media violence, uh, cognitive priming, and that'll be it. That'll be aggression topic complete. And then all we've got to do left uh, to finish is uh, our final, final paper three topic, uh, which is cognition and development. But we'll come to that uh, in due course. So before we do that, we're just going to come out of this PowerPoint and just do a bit of housekeeping and look at the work that was set this week okay here we go so, quick look. so yeah everybody should find out should have joined the Seneca class which i think everybody has um, and i have set kind of the research methods kind of ongoing task due for the 20th um, of april i'll just highlight that there and that's kind of to go over uh, all of research methods, just continual revision, and uh, you sort of dip in and out of and complete that in four weeks. Um, so the final topic there is cognitive priming. Uh, you would have done some prep reading on 246 of the textbook and some brief kind of additional notes. Um, we're going to read through that page 29 of the booklet explanation together, and the video then kind of supports that. As we go through that in the booklet, then you know you can pause whenever you like and just add in any additions or annotations and elaborations where needed. So we're going to keep it fairly simple today, um, and then finally, um, you've got a mini assessment for aggression, which will be this Friday. Okay, and I put on Teams that if we can all meet on Teams at 1 p.m. on Friday, this Friday, it will just be a couple of questions that you'll do almost live in time conditions, and then you'll submit that via Teams just for me to have a look at, and just to kind of keep this engagement as we go through. Remember, guys, it is really, really important that we, we finish the course, okay, for numerous reasons. Um, it's really important we finish the course. Please do stay engaged. Um, you're doing a really, really good job in these tricky times. Um, I will set a little bit of Easter work, but it will just be kind of to do some revision and that kind of thing. But I'll talk to you more about that on Friday when we meet on Teams at 1 o'clock. And what we might do, actually, is give the video recording a go and we kind of talk to each other uh, kind of face to face as well. Okay, so let's go back to the PowerPoint and we're going to cover cognitive priming today. So, cognitive priming uh, is a really interesting one. Okay, it's all about increasing the access accessibility of information. The way I kind of introduced the idea of cognitive priming originally is to try to think about a kind of a different example than we can apply. So, if we explain the concept of priming first, then we'll relate it to, to kind of um, media violence. You're probably wondering why we've got a picture of bananas up on the screen. Well, let's imagine, let's imagine that um, we're doing um, a little mini experiment in school. We often do these kind of thought experiments, don't we, where we give you know, the magic memory chocolate example, all these ones, right? So imagine a kind of two hour long lesson where, unbeknownst to you, I, during the whole of that two hour lesson, I work into the lesson the word bananas. I, throughout the whole lesson, I just randomly dropping the word bananas without you noticing, okay? Bear with me. Um, so I'm dropping in the word bananas over and over again for that two, two hour long lesson, okay? And you would have been exposed to that, been triggering your memory and knowledge of bananas without even thinking about it. What is that is doing is increasing the accessibility of, your, of the information and memory that you have about bananas. Now, if we then did a reaction time test at the end of that two hour lesson, and you weren't really aware of the fact that I just said bananas the whole time. And the task was to look at a screen and to um, hit the space bar as fast as you possibly could every time you saw a picture of some fruit. And it was mixed amongst loads of different pictures that are fruit and non-fruit, some bananas, some not bananas. What we tend to find, and this has been done before in a previous experiment, is that you would your reaction time would be much, much faster for when you see the picture of the banana. Okay, and that's because we have almost primed your memory and your pathway for bananas, okay? And it's almost like warming up that neural pathway, warming up that accessibility to your knowledge around bananas. Okay? So think of priming, cognitive priming, as kind of warming up those cognitive pathways and warming up that the connection that you have to your, to your long-term memory about that information. What we can do then, and that's quite an unusual example, but what we can do then is apply that to aggression. Okay, and when we think about cognitive priming and aggression and media violence, it refers to the temporary increase in the accessibility of thoughts and ideas about violence, which in turn activates other aggressive thoughts, um, 
through their association in memory pathways. Okay, so we're gonna, it's quite a broad kind of definition. We're gonna unpick that and look at that in more detail in the booklet, which we'll go to now. Now I've learned here that if I press escape, that ends the video. So I better not do that. All right, here we go. So we we'll go to the booklet, we're gonna read through the AO1 stuff. Um, um, there we go, there we go. Okay, so as we go through then I can elaborate on the AO1 material about cognitive priming. We can add in extra, any extra details as we go through. So, think, like I said, think of, you can see this picture here on my screen, priming your brain, okay? You know, another, another good example is when you, when you go into, um, before you go into an exam, okay, probably should be talking about exams, you know, imagine going into an exam, um, uh, you might look at a whole list of keywords, and those keywords prime the retrieval of information, okay, it's like warming up those memory pathways. So, content priming, this theory assumes that expo exposure, again, it's an exposure theory, to aggressive acts leads to temporary increase in the accessibility of thoughts and ideas. It's an increase in accessibility of information, what we're referring to. So thus, constant exposure to media violence activates thoughts or ideas around violence. This makes aggressive behaviour more likely. So we have we have our own thoughts and ideas around aggression anyway, okay, through um, our own experiences in life, and we have our own memories of aggressive acts and things like that. The idea here is that by by being exposed to media violence, it increases the accessibility of our own thoughts and feelings about violence, and when we then encounter a particular situation, because we've temporarily increased the accessibility of information around aggression, it can make us more likely to then be aggressive because we prime that response. So we can break this down in terms of like activating the memory pathway and interpreting the situations we can go through now. So first of all, activating the memory. This explanation says that after viewing a violent TV program, the viewer is primed to respond aggressively because the memory network involved in aggression is activated. Watching aggressive acts and violence on television can activate other passive, aggressive thoughts and emotions in viewers through their association and memory pathways. In other words, like I said, we have our own, by viewing aggression, it activates our memories that we already have about aggressive acts that we may have experienced or seen before. For example, playing a computer game in which the, the player kills other characters may prime thoughts of physical fighting, which may then lead to the feelings of anger and motivation to harm others. A violent film can, according to this explanation, temporarily lower the threshold of these thoughts, making them accessible for a short time. Now, the more accessible a thought or idea is, the more likely it is to be used to interpret social information. In other words, it's almost like if you've primed lots of aggressive thoughts and feelings, and then you go into a situation, you may be looking, almost interpreting the social situation through a pair of kind of aggressive goggles, if you like. By priming all those thoughts and feelings about aggression, you then start to interpret social information in an aggressive way. So frequent activation through prolonged exposure to media violence may result in a lowered activation threshold for these aggressive thoughts, allowing them to be accessed more readily and so to process and interpret information. This then means that when a similar situation arises, a person is more likely to respond in accordance with what they have stored in their memory. So, in other words, by priming, by watching media violence or playing computer games with, with violent material in them, it, it kind of activates and lowers the threshold of activation for those thoughts and feelings and actions that we have from our own experiences. That can then lead to misinterpretation of social situations, which can then lead to an increase in aggressive behaviour, in a nutshell. So, this theory suggests that violence in everyday life depends on cues. Okay, so also if, if we have been primed for behaviours, when a cue then comes along, it's more likely to lead to that behaviour as well. So meaning stimuli in the environment are needed to trigger the prime behaviour. To have an effect, these cues need to have some similarity to the viewed aggression via the media. It is the association between the two that leads to the imitative aggressive behaviour. This theory explains why some can observe one act of violent behaviour that then carries out a different aggressive behaviour later on. It is not the behaviour they are copying, but viewing the aggressive act has activated aggression in the individual. 
we've got a nice kind of diagram to explain it here. So we've got a kid here playing violent video games. He is being primed. He is triggering his thoughts, feelings, emotions, past experiences about aggression. And it activates these memory pathways all around aggression, whether that's to do with past experiences, emotions that he has. If a cue then that is similar comes along in his environment, it will also trigger that pathway and therefore be more likely to respond in a violent way. The brain is almost warmed up in a way to become aggressive, um, or sorry, to warmed up in terms of its aggression and activation of thoughts and feelings, and therefore is more likely to increase the chance of aggressive acts should there also be a cue available. Okay, So for example, the kid plays those violent computer games, is primed for those actions, and then in the playground maybe the next day or or perhaps um, that afternoon when he goes out to play with his friends someone pushes him um, that's similar to the computer games then he may respond in an aggressive way because he's been primed for that behavior it's more accessible okay so i need to pause the video at this point and maybe just listen back through the kind of key points here and elaborations okay underline the key terms um, and bring that together. If you'd like, an optional activity here would be to bring this into a six point summary or a 60 second speech, which I know you guys love. Maybe you could perform that 60 second speech to your mum, dad, dog, hamster, cat, whatever you got. Okay, on to the evaluation then. Um, now you had some evaluation to read through yourself, so that's all good. You've got some supporting research there. Um, we'll go through the practical applications and the, the boxes that you had to fill in yourself. Um, some is fairly similar to the other evaluation that you used, but this is also, the top one is, is a little bit different. So, a strength uh, is that, is that? Oh, a strength are the practical applications that arise from these things, and from the theory itself. Okay? So, if we know that exposure to violent media can activate aggressive memories, which leads to aggressive behaviour, then tighter guidelines on aggression shown in cartoons can, can be achieved. Okay, so cognitive primary would suggest that aggression should not be shown at all, okay, to avoid these pathways being activated. Essentially, if children are watching aggressive cartoons all of the time, then their aggressive thoughts, feelings, experiences are continually activated and primed. So we need to kind of control that, and I guess that's why we kind of have water sheds and things like that. Instead, alternative responses to hostility could be shown. You could also change the kind of cartoons, and instead of the cartoons responding in an aggressive way, they respond in a humorous way, perhaps. This should reduce the exposure. Again, we're trying to reduce the exposure here. It's an exposure theory. You know, we want to reduce the exposure of media violence to children. Uh, we should, in turn, reduce the aggressive behaviour in children. We've got a similar argument around the nature and nurture debate. Again, bringing in that malware of low variant as an alternative explanation, suggesting then that we could have an interactionist approach. So that's a familiar piece of evaluation. And again, we've got some methodological issues here, okay, uh, with the research. And we remember we practiced that skill a little while ago about, you know, we can criticise research if we then use that linking sentence to say, well, if this research lacks credibility, it also lacks the support for the theory itself. Okay, remember to always have that linking sentence. We'll just read for this last one. An issue with the research supporting the influence of media violence is that there are methodological flaws. For example, the experimental research exposes participants to aggression and then, all, then almost immediately afterwards assesses their levels of aggression. In reality, we are not usually exposed to an aggressive, aggressive situation so soon after being exposed to it via the media. And we will be exposed to other influences in that, in that time, right? Furthermore, there are also consequences to the aggression in real life that are not in the experiment. In other words, we're kind of lacking that ecological validity within the experiment, okay, and therefore lacking external validity. Okay? In real life levels of aggression may not be as high, so we have to be cautious when drawing conclusions as to the extent that media can influence our aggression. So again, it would be a good point to kind of go back through this yourself, listen to um, the evaluation, make sure you've got that all complete, and then of course to um, do our essay plan. And that is it, that is our aggression topic complete. So let's just go back to the work that was set, uh, make sure everyone's happy. Okay, so we've done our video, 
Um, go back through the video, make sure your work's complete, and you can do an essay plan for that as well. Uh, continue your revision for a mini assessment on Friday at 1 p.m. We'll have a chat on Teams just to make sure um, everyone's ready for that on Friday. Um, and the Easter work, okay, I'll set that, but it'll be mainly around revision. All right, so I hope that's okay. I hope that was useful. Um, just go back through that last little theory, and that is a question complete. So well done, everybody. Um, one more topic to do. So thanks very much. I um, hope that was helpful. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe.